Hi, welcome to In the Kitchen with Annie. This is Ann Alexander, your realtor, chef, and friend. Today we're going to go back to my Irish roots and we're going to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. We're going to make a really great Irish uh, beef stew and we're also going to be making an apple tart. It's kind of a rustic tart and then we're going to top it with, of course, a beautiful uh, caramel cream sauce. So come on in the kitchen. All right, so to get started with our apple tart, you gotta cut the apples. So if you see here, I've got a bowl of ice water and I've already got some apple slices in it. The ice water keeps the apples from turning brown, so it's a great way to keep your apples fresh and crisp. I like to use Granny Smith apples because they have a really tart taste, but they also hold their shape when you're baking. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually, I like to cut off the ends and then we're going to peel it here with our knife. Once we have it peeled, we're going to quarter them, take out the stem, and then we're going to slice it into slices for the apple tart. So here we have our quarter, and then we're just going to slice it down. So now we're going to start making our tart dough. I like to use everything it has to be really, really super cold. And as you can tell, we're fans of Cincinnati Reds, being that's where we're from. So I had to use my Cincinnati Reds Pilsner glass. So we're going to start with two cups of flour. I already have one in. We'll put another cup in here. You can use a tablespoon of sugar and a half a teaspoon of salt. Get the teaspoon. All right, we're gonna mix that slowly. So all I have right now in here are my dry ingredients. Just gonna mix that up a little bit. I'm gonna add my cold butter, which I've already cut and cubed. that until it becomes fine morsels, almost like pea-sized uh, pieces with the flour. So now that we've got this in small coarse peas, I'm going to turn this on and I'd like to, everything needs to be super cold. Like I already said, the butter needs to be cold and I've got ice water here. The reason behind that is that way your crust tastes nice and flaky. So I'm going to slowly add the ice water, one tablespoon at a time, until the dough comes together. At this point, I'm going to add just a little bit of uh, lemon essential oil. It just kind of brings out the flavor in the apples. If you don't have the essential oil, you can use uh, lemon zest. So my dough's here, it's nice and cool. What I like to do is kind of very loosely shape it into a ball, and then I press down. And I keep pressing down until I get the shape I want. I'm looking for an oval. I don't like to use the um, rolling pin, because it just I like to get my hands in my, in my food and just making sure that it's still rustic like I want. You are more than welcome to use your rolling pin if you don't want to get involved with your food this much, but uh, this always works really well, especially for a rustic tart. All right, so now at this point, you can see that I've got it in a nice oval shape. It's about a quarter of an inch thick. I'm going to start layering my apples on the tart. I like to cut them in the slices so that way I can just kind of layer them here like so. Leave it about an inch on the sides. And 
once I'm done with that, we will put the tart together and pop it in the oven. All right, so I've got my apples along here. Now I'm gonna take the dough and just press it up into the apples so that way everything stays in a nice little package and it doesn't seep off. As you can see, I've got this on my sill pad. You can also use a parchment paper or even wax paper. But you definitely want it on something you don't want to put it directly onto the cookie sheet. So like I said, nice and rustic. Clean that all up. Now to finish it off, we're going to take our spoon and sprinkle a little sugar over the top.
All right, so I've got this all nicely whisked up. Of course, you can't whisk the celery, but we're gonna pour this gently over top. We're gonna cover it. We are going to bake it at 325 for about three hours. After I take it out of the oven, about 15 minutes before I take it out, I'm actually gonna add some uh, frozen peas and some cut up mushrooms just to give it a little extra flavor. All right, now that we've got everything else ready and going, we've got our apple tart cooling and our stew is in the oven, I'm gonna make our super easy caramel sauce. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take one cup of brown sugar and pack it tightly. One stick of butter and a quarter cup of half and half. We're going to bring that to a very low boil. You want it to be a very gentle, gentle boil. And once that starts boiling, we're going to remove it from the heat and we're going to add our vanilla extract. All right, so I've had this on a gentle boil, constantly stirring for about three minutes. So I'm ready to take it off the heat. We're going to put in about a teaspoon of vanilla. It does bubble up a little bit, so don't get freaked out when that happens. <laughs> Stir that all in. And I've got a jar here waiting for me, so I'm going to put that in there and we'll serve it with our apple tart. All right, so we've got our caramel, which is cooled, and I just cut a piece of our apple tart and drizzled some caramel on top of it. Our stew is ready, and I've just made a real quick uh, sour cream and horseradish sauce. I'm going to dollop that on top and get ready to have some dinner. Thank you so much for joining me today for In the Kitchen with Annie. I hope you enjoyed all uh, the cooking that we've done today to celebrate our Irish heritage for St. Patrick's Day. Please look at the recipes. There'll be a, a link below for you. And as always, have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon.